by the authority vested in me by the Senate of York University, I hereby confer on you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. En vertu de la torte dont je suis, je suis investi par le Senat de l'Université York, je vous confère le grade de doctorat en science, honoris causa. Admito to pay, admito te ad gradum. Congratulations, Captain. We hope you're so delighted. Thank you, Chancellor, Mr. President, Provo, Chair of the Board, and faculty, and greetings to all my fellow alumni, graduates, guests, and friends. I'm ecstatic to now call myself an alumnus of the great York University. As you've heard, I do have some other affiliations with other universities, but in the bright glow of this occasion, I can't remember their names. <laughs> what I'm about to say to you has no relevance to you today. Good opening line, eh? But although you're in the euphoria of your victory in graduating, there will come a time when you will wish you could remember what I'm about to say today. As a matter of fact, there may even be a time tomorrow morning when you wake before dawn that you, wish, that you will wish you could recall them. Because you see, over the years, the words I'm about to say to you became my own form of a mantra. It would appear to someone who came from another planet today that my life has been a life of only successes. It has not. It's also consisted of many failures, but don't ask me to recount them. I don't remember my failures. I tried to adopt Babe Ruth's motto, don't let the fear of striking out get in your way. But strike out I did, and I want to leave the young people here today, my fellow graduates, who hold our future in your collective hands with a few thoughts about the fear of failure. It's often said that Canadians are risk averse and that our Fear of failure is a serious impairment to being an innovative and entrepreneurial country. I'm hardwired in, wired in my DNA to think positively. And I've had great teachers who have tempered that with the need for care and wisdom in applying that optimism. People like John Evans, Ken Knox, Lou Siminovich, Joe Rotman, President Shukri, and Paul Cantor my darling Angie, my wonderful family, and so many others. They taught me to consider, but not be deterred by the pessimist, to think nobly, to want to do good. They followed the advice of Hoshang Akhtar, who said, an intelligent fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. They all have had courage and genius to spare, they refuse to be deterred by naysayers and at times move their personal universe in opposite directions. It's become popular to quote a famous line from the movie Apollo 13, failure is not an option. Well, I'm here to tell you something that intuitively you already know. Failure is always an option, always a possibility. Because nothing is certain, Adopting the notion that failure cannot be an option dooms one to never attempting anything audacious or transformational. Fearing failure is not an option if you are to make fundamental change or challenge the common view. Remember, the common view is usually just common. It's the uncommon view that gives the possibility of transformational change. If you attempt something that's uncommon, audacious, grand, or transformational, and you fail, you will know that you try to do something noble and great. If you fail, you'll only be disappointed you didn't succeed. If, on the other hand, you never attempt it, you will always live with regret that you didn't have the courage to try and possibly, but only possibly, fail. You'll make failure certain if you never try because of your fear 
Fulton Urser said, many of us crucify ourselves between two thieves, regret for the past and fear of the future. God gave us nights for a reason. For some, it's to cower in the darkness, regretting the failures of our day and paralyzed by our fears of public failure on the morrow. Didn't mean it for that purpose, I don't think. It's a time to dream new dreams of things great to accomplish and paths around obstacles put in the way by our opponents. It's a time to refill our tanks of courage, to get above the traffic of our lives and see paths no one else sees, paths to accomplishment, roads to victory. We should find, and should we find the road ends, we need to recognize it has and choose a new road to an even more audacious and noble goal. Winston Churchill said success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Because you see, our lives don't begin and end with a project. We are lives, not projects. Our goal in life should be to leave the world a better place by giving and creating for others' benefits. That takes a lifetime of trying. I said trying. Not always succeeding, but trying. Having the wisdom to know when for circumstances beyond our control, and that's the operative phase beyond our control, the project has failed. And then to honorably move on. Don't wallow in regrets. Take a night of dreams. Refill your tank of courage. Drain the engine of fear. Articulate a vision. Recruit the team. Empower them and share the vision. Ignore the commonly held view and educate yourself with the fantastic possibilities. Get the facts right, understand the road to success, and learn from your past successes or failures. Then, rise in the morning with the faith that you can succeed. Winston Churchill never admit, admitted allowing fear to enter his heart. 1940, just having taken over the role of prime minister of a threatened empire, he said, I take up my task with buoyancy and hope. I feel sure that our cause will not be suffered to fail among men. This time I feel entitled to claim the aid of all. And I say, come then, let's go forward with our united strength. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, when faced with the supremacy of the Soviet Union in space, said in his famous Man on the Moon speech, for while we cannot guarantee that we shall one day be first, we can guarantee that any failure to make this effort will be our last. We take an additional risk by making it in full view of the world. But this very risk enhances our stature when we are successful. We in Canada today in many ways are in the best of all times possible. We have progress in science and engineering, education, environment, and the arts that's nothing short of spectacular. We have enlightened administrations that embrace innovation, and in my world of science, give support to truly transformational models of translation medicine like Mars and the Ontario Institute of Cancer Research, that at time were only our dreams. On the other hand, we have chaos in the world. It's almost unprecedented. Financial collapse is a, is a real possibility. Collective plans to lead us out of this morass are not apparent, and the wisdom of a fearless Winston Churchill-like figure seems far away. And although Canada appears to be an island of stability in this sea of chaos, we have deficits facing both government that appears to be an obstacle to any great and audacious solutions that would depend on government alone to deliver health. But there are solutions. And the economy will strengthen. And deficits will end. So it may be time for us to collectively welcome the night, when regrets will not be tolerated, but rather we will dream dreams of great and glorious futures, of noble schemes and roads to success, to rise tomorrow with hope, enthusiasm, a plan, and with the courage to fail. And in the end, to make this province, this country, and this world a much better place. A better place because of what you, the class of 2011, will do and will contribute to this great land. Thank you, my wonderful and proud alma mater. And tonight, may all of you have spectacular.
spectacular dreams. Thank you.